Welcome everyone. My name is Eliza Singh and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Netcom Learning, a market leader in promoting lifelong learning, training and talent development solutions. We are very excited to host today's event, Microsoft 365 Masterclass. Presenting today's topic is Dinesh Kursija. With a teaching and training experience of over 22 years, Dinesh is a Microsoft certified trainer with a plethora of other certifications like MCSA and Azure Solution Expert. Dinesh has certified expertise in System Center Private Cloud and has implemented ADFS for companies migrating to Azure Hybrid, AAD, SSO, and MFA. Please bear in mind that this is an overview of a very robust topic. We offer a collection of technical and business courses that can be tailored towards your specific requirements. If you are interested in further discussion, you can make an appointment with our learning consultants through our website at www.netcomlearning.com. Today's session is also being recorded, so you will get free access to the recording in the next 24 hours via email. Netcom Learning helps customers build innovative learning organizations by achieving a smarter workforce, adopting to change, and driving growth. We do this with a broad catalog of offerings, developing customized learning plans, and our global delivery capabilities. Since 1998, we have been empowering organizations with our managed learning services to help them reach optimal performance results and address challenges. We have nine practice areas in which we specialize. They encompass people, process, and technology training. Today's presentation is from the business application practice area. Netcom Learning offers a comprehensive training portfolio for business application courses. Our upcoming classes include various trainings on Microsoft 365, Windows 10, SharePoint, and more. Private training to Teams is also available, of which the learning plan can be customized to a specific need of that audience. You can also access a variety of business application marketing assets, such as the free one-hour trainings and blogs by clicking on the available webinar handout. These offerings can be found with a simple search on our website, www.netcomlearning.com. Now you guys also must be thinking that where do you access your courseware for today's class? So to take you to our particular website, if you come into the student portal, I'm pretty sure we would have uh, shared the student portal uh, credentials with you. I would like to take you through the student portal. On the student portal, on Monday, after you have completed this class, you must come to the completed classes section. And under the completed classes section, you will be able to see your courseware and download your certificate for this particular class. So why should you attend this event? In this event, we will get an insightful overview of cloud computing with specific focus on Microsoft 365 cloud services and capabilities. This event will not only talk about the cloud concepts, but also Microsoft 365 productivity and teamwork capabilities. Now I'll just give you a quick overview of the logistics before we get started. To start with, you have the option to adjust the window size to your liking. Simply hit the escape key and find the zoom button on the top left corner of your GoToWebinar viewer. Everyone has been muted except for our presenters. Please feel free to submit any questions you have for the presenters here in the questions pane, and we will address them at the end of the session. To get the best out of today's webinar, we have also included the slides, courses we talked about, and marketing assets in the handout section of your GoToWebinar viewer. You may refer to them and get a better understanding of the topic. And now I'll pass this over to Dinesh to present today's topic. Hi, Dinesh. Hey, morning, Eliza. Morning, everybody. 
Thank you so much. That was fantastic introduction from your side. Let me just go ahead and share my screen and we'll get it started with the business. Okay, is the screen clear, Eliza? I am waiting for your screen. Yes, your screen is clear. Super. Let's go ahead and now give a head start. From the slide zero zero, I'll also not jump in directly to the technical part. And let me just talk about this course that we are going through. This is uh, M365 Fundamentals MS900 course. So let me just go ahead and give a head start now. I um, thank you for joining us today. And I'll do my best to give you this uh, uh, satisfaction guarantee. And uh, I will also point out towards the certification benefits also here. And yeah, my name is Dinesh Kursija, uh, the name DK. And I'm in this industry since last 22 years, and I've done lots and lots of projects. And uh, um, I've been working since, you can imagine, like uh, when the Active Directory was also not there. So uh, I'll try to do my best to uh, give you the information here from the production environment perspective also. So uh, that you could actually correlate how does it actually works out in the production environment. Yeah. Part of NetCom learning. And uh, coming down over here to the facilities uh, classes, it will be two and a half hours class, 150 minutes. And uh, building hours, generally, you might be running this from your home. Usually, people uh, do it from their office also. But during the COVID hours, I'm sure that you are there from your home. But still, check all the building hours if somebody is running it from the office also. And you might be aware of the parking. OK, these are certain guidelines from the uh, ILT instructor led training perspective. Let me just uh, talk about the breaks here. Yeah. So there will be uh, 10 minutes break um, somewhere around uh, one hour from now. And uh, later, if one more break is required for five minutes, we'll look into it and then we can check. Phones to be on the um, silent mode. But yeah, uh, if you get any phone calls, please do pick up the calls because it, it could be very important call from your friend, family. And uh, during the break itself, somebody wants to go out for smoking. Uh, can take a break during that time. OK, now coming down to the recycling, this is two and a half hour course. So you might be uh, coming up with some, uh, some some plate of chips, biscuits, or something like that, and uh, uh, juice. But it's your when you uh, finish up the web, when we finish up the webinar, you add the right things at the right place. Yeah, that's very important. And also requesting you to keep a water bottle next to you because uh, we are going to sit here for two and a half hours. Might get uh, dehydrated, and you need to be hydrated. Uh, also, it is said to be as during the training program, we get sleepy. We we should have light lunch. I take from my side. Uh, food never makes you feel sleepy. It's it's just that we don't drink water, and we get dehydrated, and we go a little down. So keep uh, sipping up water also. Which will keep you awake. So in this course, uh, generally there are five modules, but I'm going to pick up uh, three modules over here. The first module that we're going to cover up is related to the cloud concepts because some of our friends might be absolutely new to the cloud. So we'll just quickly go from there and then enter into the productivity and teamwork capabilities. We'll also go ahead for the business management capabilities also. And we'll we'll see the prerequisites and other things that uh, it's like even if one is uh, with a fresher knowledge also can go ahead, but at least terminology should be clear that what is computer, what is network, and what are servers. It should be, I'm, I'm looking for the first name. Yeah. So that's all from uh, in the in the slide zero zero. I think uh, course materials. Uh, uh, you will get some uh, information about the course material from Eliza before we close the session today. And uh, yeah, so you could also go ahead and get certified also. There are different kind of certifications available for, uh, uh, for from the Microsoft side. And especially for this program also, there is one exam that is MS-900. Yeah, so let me just take you towards the uh, MS-900, that exam that we were talking about. So if you if I scroll down this, okay, you could always go ahead and just type uh, MS 900 plus sign with docs.microsoft.com. It becomes much more. Whatever you want to search in about the learning, yeah, just give the topic name and give a plus sign and say docs.microsoft.com. Earlier days, we used to have a website called as technet.microsoft.com. So that technet was really, really a good website. Now, 
this one docs.microsoft.com is much much more richer than technet because these uh, uh, docs.microsoft.com data contains the pictures also like it contains the screenshots also so if i if i want to go ahead and look out something like this i just gave it like uh, um, and i can give something like this right here if you, if you put a right query you can easily go ahead and get it like this and this is what is uh, it is pointing to the first one and if ah the exam was updated wow so this was updated here now if i go down here um it's pointing towards the fundamentals and here these are the points what topics that you should prepare that's over here uh, in the exam from the exam perspective so you will find that uh, the exam outline will come up over here so there are two ways to prepare this exam one is the instructor led pre training and uh, in this this is the course name that you have and also when i scroll down a little down okay let me just go ahead and open this course this is already open up here um yeah or oh, let me just try it on the and show it to you so no, tomorrow it's not the confusion for you but okay dk kept all the tabs ready with them and i'm not able to see yeah so this is the one that it is pointing to and it is gonna give you a uh, um, fundamentals track certification yeah that's what it is you have associates you have expert level also different different tracks are there and here it is if i if i go for that response again and i just click on this one so this is ms 900 one a series and in this the audience profile is also telling that you can you can be a business decision maker and the it professionals who aspire to deploy the cloud service organizations or who are looking out for foundational uh, knowledge on the cloud fundamentals and especially from the saas perspective yeah we're going to talk about the as pass saas those buzzwords also and uh, when I scroll up and down, these are the concepts. For so the first one, we are already covering up over here. Then we have a productivity and the teamwork. This is also being getting covered in this webinar, plus also this one. So left out will be security and compliance. And plus, the last one is about the licensing. So technically, if I say that, um, if I cover up everything in uh, in the whole course takes one day, and we are here just for a few hours. So that's where the gap but i'll try my best to cover up something from the licensing side also so that it becomes easy for you and this is from the beginner uh, perspective that we are going to do it here that's the track i'll try my best to make it to a bit more advanced level also some of the few things okay one good point that i want to give it to you here that after this training program as eliza said that you will be getting the uh, recordings also for this but also you could be uh, getting something over here like this. Let me just go ahead here. Ah, online free. This is also fun. So if I if I go ahead here and say start, and here we go. Ta -da! Yeah, my daughter taught me this. Yeah, says that daddy close the eyes, close the eyes, and here the princess comes out. Ta -da! Yeah. So we have some videos coming up over here. If I go ahead and click on starts, like okay, that's about the introduction. What about Microsoft Certified? So you will get lots and lots of information over here. Demonstrations is also there. So you can go ahead and uh, yeah. So that's the online learning available to you for this. So different kind of uh, information that you will find it over here. Reading, some, some labs are there and that interactive labs are also there. Mm, going back here now towards the, so that was about slide zero, zero. Now let me jump into the slide number one. Uh, that's module one that we're going to cover up over here. So here we go. Let me just look at this. Okay, so now we are starting up technically. Absolutely. And here we go. Coming down to module zero one, that's about Microsoft 365 software tips. Now this word, Microsoft 365, it, it gives you a view of all the products of the Microsoft in this. Earlier, when, when Microsoft started up the cloud business, we were having these products sold as individual, like Exchange was there, it was sold as Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, then you have um, Skype Online, and Intune. These were all the individual products. Then they 
came up to the second level that is they started bundling it yeah this is very good information that from where actually the ms m365 started up so let me just quickly uh, make a note over here that it was earlier exchange online i'll just give it asp online and then we'll give it as uh, skype online So these were all individual products, and there was one more series that was going on here that was AAD, Active Directory, then we used to have as uh, that's P1, P2, P1, P2, and coming down over here, the next one was Intune, AD RMS, yeah, we used to have RMS, ADP, Advanced Threat Protection. So these products, then they started selling them into the bundle. So this is one about now. Then they bundled it, and they came up with O365. Yeah. And then here we had a product called as EMS. It was Enterprise Mobility EMS. Enterprise mobility security, and then they, they were selling it in the bundle over here. Okay, so if you buy this, then you'll get some discounts over here. If buying individual product becomes a little costly, so they bundle and start selling it. Now, when you see here, so you have now complete pre chart here. This is what is your M365. So all the products. So if I go ahead and buy M365, will I get exchange? Will I get AD? All the top, all the products? Absolutely, yes. So this is uh, the one that it started up now. Earlier, they were individual products. Then they got bundled into semi-products. Now, semi is a single product called as M365. So the 365 degree view it is giving up because it has all type of products inside it. Let's go ahead and understand M365 cloud concepts. Now I'm going to talk about the cloud computing. So if we're going to learn about the uh, principles of cloud computing, then we're going to see what is M365 and then select the cloud deployment model. One. So yeah, that's very important. So th these are the objectives that we're going to learn in the module one, principles of what is 365 and the cloud deployment. Uh, okay, now coming down to the first lesson that we have, that is cloud computing. Oh, that's the introduction coming up because there might be some of us. Earlier days, uh, so you might, if I ask you a question that, okay, how old is cloud? It is new, five years, seven years, 10 years, or was it there from the start? Absolutely, it was, it, it, it is there from the start itself, but the services were scattered into different, different uh, kind of uh, areas. Suppose if I want to go ahead, um, let me give you one example. In year 2004, uh, I was I was working up as an assistant manager in one of the company, and my manager, Rajiv, said that, DK, you go to one of the data center and implement one server with AD and exchange with the mailing system. I, I was shocked. I lifted my eyebrows. I said, Rajiv, we are building data centers for uh, private data centers for the companies, public data centers are not so much in demand. People have started creating their so their own data centers. So you want me to go ahead and do it? Said, yes, okay, go ahead and do it. So I went ahead and there was huge security in there. In fact, when I entered into that glass door where the biometric authentication was there during those days, so I was walking inside that uh, data center see racks and racks and racks. On my left hand side, I could see one rack. On my right hand side, uh, one rack. But these racks were caged. Few of the racks were caged. I stood over there and I asked question to the guy walking along. Why are these racks? Oh, this is a physical layer of security and there could be competitors or somebody could come up and spoil their service. So they said that they need an extra layer of security. So, ah, so where is my server? Where is my rack? It took me to the corner, one piece of server. You could, and looking to such a big world, and I said, now, to such a big world, I'm having just this one piece over here. What all other services that you are providing? I asked the guy, he said, whatever you want, DK, you want compute, you want network, firewall, load balances, complete infrastructure as a service. He said, wow. So, uh, and I replicated this to my friend, saying that I did so and so, so and so uh, project. After that, uh, I got one order. 
my friends that he said that uh, uh, this is my website and a database I want you to implement and give me some mailboxes. So, okay, so I call up Rajiv, give me the number of that vendor. I want to go ahead and uh, uh, book one server for a whole year. Ago. No, DK, you should provide the right solution. What is the requirement according to it? You should go to another station, go to that vendor, he will do it. For you. I visited over there and uh, he collected the data in 15 minutes. He came back, he said that your website is live and these are your mailboxes. I said, no server required. Said, no, why you require a server? We are into the hosting business. We'll give you a platform where your services are running. Wow. So, and what about the mailboxes? We have something like Brinkster and Gmail and Hotmail, whichever you want to pick up. These are the plans. You could access it. So no need of service. But here, the same thing that is coming up under one roof. In Earlier, the services were there. One was providing infrastructure as a service, other one was providing uh, platform as a service, then the software as a service. But now everything comes under one roof. So what is actually a cloud computing? So in this lesson, you're going to learn what actually the cloud computing is, uh, uh, how it evolved, the, uh, how it evolves the IT operations and business drivers for the cloud, and how organization can use the tools and services in M365 to elevate all the employees and the first line so that the productivity could be enhanced. Yes. So let's talk about cloud computing. So in the cloud computing, you're running up the compute services over here. You can see that uh, you are able to run your web apps, databases, virtual machines. So in this, you have different kind of services running up. Plus, you have a communication kind of services where you have an exchange online also. It's a, though it's a SaaS-based solution, but finally, these are the services which is available. Then you have a productivity services also like collaborations where you have SharePoint, where you have different kind of tools available. Then you have a search engines also where you can go ahead and customize the applications. You can have an API also where you can have a um, Azure search in it, and then you can have a storage also. So when you see a cloud computing, it is basically a service where servers, storage, databases, networking, everything. So whatever I have it in my data center is running up. And technically, this was running up earlier. Also. But earlier vendors were providing only specific services. It was, it was all together into different, different locations, different buildings, and different services, OK, different companies also. Yeah. Now, when you talk about uh, differentiating ID funding models, so when you talk about capex and opex, now this is very important. Capex means capex cost with buying. So when I am building up my own data center, uh, I have to go for capital expenditure. Yes, so I have to invest capital. I need to buy a space, buy a building area, and then buy up some racks, servers, networking, everything I need to do. It. And after that, to run that, to bring that into operations, then I have an operation cost. So when I'm going ahead for my own building of my own data center, so I have a capital expenditure, then I have an operating expenditure also, then I have to get that recovered also from the from that. Yeah, I need to have the return on investments. So when you talk about the on-premises computing sets, now this is the traditional way. Earlier days, we were there, and Rajiv asked me to break it down. Yeah. The, the, no, not Raji. Raji was there itself in the cloud. So there were customers who were actually coming down. And here, if you see, now that's the traditional way where you are building up the storage cost, network cost, backup, technical person, data center infrastructure, server cost. That's all that's you who's going to bear all of that. Things. Now, when you talk about cloud computing costs, uh, many of the responsibilities are shifted to the vendor. So when you talk about um, um, as pass SaaS. So it depends upon the kind of service model that you're looking for. The, the cost will get shifted, the responsibility will get shifted towards the vendor itself. Yeah. With the on premises, data centers uh, are shifted to the cloud service provider, thinking that the physical hardware, data center costs. At least I, I'm, I'm sure that I would not have CapEx because uh, I don't need to buy servers, I don't need to buy uh, networking over there. I need to pay that, but those are all my operations costs coming up. Now, coming down to the next slide that we have over here. So, what are different kinds of things? Oh, wow. So, this is public cloud. Now, this is always big, always a buzzword like public cloud, private cloud, yeah, and the hybrid cloud. 
So this is shared uh, shared one where in this, when you talk about public cloud, this is shared versus dedicated. In shared uh, public cloud, where many companies are sharing of that. So suppose if I do only for one server and all that, my company is very small. I just want to have few servers, five or ten virtual machines that want to run it, and some few web apps. No, they will not actually give me a dedicated cloud in that case. Yeah, dedicated hardware and everything. In that case, I have to run into the share. But there are big enterprises. They say that no. From the compliance perspective, governance perspective, we need that complete racks to be assigned and it should be uh, caged, all that facilities that is coming up with the dedicated one. So dedicated public cloud is a typical enterprise organization for the physical infrastructure, which is reserved for it. And you are committing to Microsoft saying that, yes, I am reserving this for one year and we will get discounting on that. Yes, advantage is over here that it has a uh, low cost and uh, no maintenance and unlimited scalability. Yes, you have a uh, soft quota and then you have a hard quota. Maybe the certain uh, restrictions could come up. Like uh, when I go for a subscription, by default, I get uh, 10 CPU to 100 vCPUs kind of limitations. And later on, if I want to increment it, yeah, then we can go ahead and uh, request to Microsoft with a support ticket, which is absolutely free, and then you can go ahead and get that uh, increased. But there are certain uh, components which has a hard limit quota also. Now coming down over here, private cloud. Now this is what you are building it. So that's the advantage. What is the advantage? More flexibility, improved security. And yes, security is over here also. The cloud that's not there that you don't have it. Yeah, the reasons to move to the public cloud is the capex cost because capital expenditure, which I was talking about, like my data center cost, like uh, uh, my, my building cost, flow cost. I need to build the furniture, infrastructure. That's where the cost comes up into the picture, and we don't want to bear uh, in that case. Things. That's the reason that uh, people could go to the public cloud also. Now, what is Hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is like uh, where combination of private and public allowing you to go ahead and run your applications basically. And the reasons to go ahead is that we want to protect the sensitive data in our premises and whatever that we want to go ahead and uh, uh, extend our data center, we will extend it to cloud rather than investing it into our own infrastructure itself yeah, to reduce the data protection. Now, when you talk about the hybrid cloud, okay, let me just go ahead and give you some more information. Azure, when it started up, it has two models. Uh, okay. This is the old model of Azure, and uh, this is the new model. This is Azure Resource Manager. I, I repeat, this is uh, Azure Resource Manager model. Yeah. In this now, uh, uh, basically, what is the advantage that we have is like certain features are there, like uh, resource group, role-based security, and other things. But the best thing that I want to talk about is here. So sorry, it's really coming up here. And uh, here, let me just uh, draw a scenario here. This is my on-premises. It's my blue color coming up, and I'm labeling it as on-premises. Okay. So I'm paying a lot of cost over here. The capex cost is coming up. And here, we actually came up with the cloud. Here. So this is my public, Azure public cloud. Now this one, I want to extend it. I want to join it here. Can I bring this down over here? Anyways, we are we are going to have a network connectivity and we can make it up as a hybrid model also. But we can actually go ahead and download this and can install it over here. Yes, so that I have an infrastructure here. Same as your feeling that you will have it over here. And sometimes that when you feel that, okay, I want some more resources, but my hardware is not sufficient, I can go ahead and extend it. Absolutely, yes. So why I'm teaching you this, why, why I talked about the classic and all that. So here we have a downloadable version of Azure. This is called as WAP, Windows Azure Pack, which is free. And then we have this ARM, which is called as Stack, the downloadable version. This is one that I'm talking about. So you have an option of Stack, and you can create your own hybrid. Students, please make note. Yes, do, do we have any certification on this? Yes, we do have certifications also on that part. Let me just take you towards that part. And uh, 
I created this whole thing somewhere around four, five years ago, I think. So yeah, uh, five to six years ago. I, in fact, I've downloaded the classic cloud and I have done the hybrid also. We have we created that also. It's so cool that we have done. Now coming down here to, let me just query it here. Azure Stack, okay. I can give you the links if you require the links, you can just copy it the way I'm doing it. So this is the one that you can actually go ahead and download this. Yes, this is a downloadable version of Azure, correct. Now, you know that to create this kind of a cloud, it takes somewhere around eight to 12 hours. You just run one EXE, it builds up. Yeah, it builds up like SCBNM and so the other virtual machines that it requires monitoring servers. The whole infrastructure gets ready for cloud. But you require 128 GB of it. That's the requirement. And do we have any exams for that also? I'm coming to that. I think so. It was AZ six hundred. Let me just check. Yeah, stack. I should go. Drop start. Microsoft. I love this. The way it works. I see that it comes up at the top. Ta-da! Uh, I cannot go ahead and send it in the chat area. Um, Eliza, are you there in the class now? Can I send this link? Is it possible for me to send it? Or I could send it to you later. You could give them as the links uh, at the end of the class. So this is also that you could go ahead and look into it. And yeah, why I'm talking about this is because we are there at this slide. Yeah, now you could see that. Yeah, if I if I take this slide, this is regular Azure cloud, and then this is your own cloud in your premises. We can go ahead and have your premises, and in with that we can integrate that with Azure that we can see hybrid cloud. Yes. In fact, you can go ahead and have, you don't want to download the stack and you just want to have a network connectivity and stack start using. Those components could be the hybrid mode, like Active Directory in hybrid mode, network in hybrid mode, SQL in hybrid mode, all that things that you can go ahead and do that. Yeah. Now coming down to the next one. Oh, what a pass pass as but students don't limit yourself to ask pass SaaS. There are so many other service models. We have identity as a service. We have uh, storage as a service. We have a blockchain as a service. Yes, these are also not there's a cloud world going on related to the blockchain as services. Yeah. What is basically infrastructure as a service? In this, that you have compute, network, you get all these kind of things, load balancers, firewalls. We we'll talk about the pass. Pass is where, uh, from the developer perspective, let's say that uh, if I want to build an application, I'm a developer also. So when I want to build an application in the on premises, I have to wait for the Vintel team to give me the server and then go ahead and uh, uh, they do the hardening, network team takes care of it. After that, I get a chance to install IIS and then I load my app. But when it comes to cloud, it's just load your application and you're good to go. Ahead. Plus, it has so many features like scale out, scale up, elasticity is there, auto scaling is also there, security is there. There are good things that we have it over here. But here, now when you talk about PaaS, the ownership of the application belongs to you. Yeah, because you are the one who is building the application. You are the one who is actually uh, upgrading it, patching it. You are responsible. If, if the memory is leaking of that application, CPU is spiking up, you have to take a fall on that. But in that case, the cloud vendor will not say anything to you because you want to upgrade your application. You are asked. The best part over here in this case is that you you are into a continuous deployment. You have to keep on changing, and then you can go. The uh, the best part I I missed to say that the best part is. Branding. You can brand your own product. You can add a logo because the product belongs to you. You are the creator of the product. You will go ahead and do that. Coming down to SaaS, the people get confused in pass and SaaS. Yes. And I get only one answer. What is the example of SaaS? Office 365 and 360. 
So when you talk from the general perspective, it is software as a service. I just want to use that software. Do you remember the story which I was talking about 20 years ago? Yes, where uh, they gave me a mailbox. Straight away. It's a software that I'm utilizing. What about Salesforce? Have you implemented Salesforce inside your organization? No, you never installed it. You straight away consume that service. Applications like People HR, SAP on cloud. Yes, these are the good examples that you can say. Now, because SaaS doesn't belong only to Microsoft, nor to AWS or Google Cloud. It's a basic terminology in the cloud computing. Pass, pass, pass. But what is the difference between SaaS and SaaS? DK, both are same. Both are application. But here in PaaS, you are responsible for the application. You have to upgrade, you have to patch it, you can brand it. But when it comes to SaaS, SaaS, you are not the owner of the app. You are just consuming it, what actually you need. It's a software that is centrally hosted and you're just using it as an end customer. You just go ahead and subscribe for it and start using it. Like portal.office.com, you have XT, you have SharePoint. Yes, these are the applications. These are SaaS-based applications and you start using it. Correct. Now, what you can't do it over here. Um, you can't do is brand new because the product belongs to Microsoft. So you cannot change it to your own logo saying that, yeah, in on-premises, you usually change that logo of your uh, uh, exchange login page and all that, that you can do it. Now coming down over here, uh, let me just show you a little bit over here from the practical perspective also, so that you get feel comfortable about it. Uh, let me just go here and check, okay. Now this is what inside the inside the Azure, okay. There is no segregation that we have. Like this area is us, this area is past. They all stay together. In fact, they get integrated also through service endpoints. I want to use uh, past services into the virtual machine, which is an infrastructure as a service. So we have to configure the endpoints also. All that is possible. So here I'm going to the virtual machine, and here that's one of my virtual machine running up. And when I want to go ahead and create a web app services, okay. I'll just go ahead and uh, create a, a web app here, which is not going to take much time. It's a fast paced solution. And I say DK web app one. Okay. And now when I want to go ahead and pick up here, that's the one. East US is my favorite location. And that's my server, which is getting spindled over here in the background. I can change the server sizing that I want and the kind of services that I want to go ahead. Uh, like this is going to give me instances like auto scale 10 servers, staging features is there, slots are there. And then I have an isolated network. So because my application is a high, um, um, it is, it is, it's very important that the network should be free because the web apps, the customers are there on the shared network, on the shared hardware. They are working up on the shared LAN part. So we need to go ahead and do that. That also we can do. So, okay, just a minute. I think so the size of this getting resized there. Just a minute. Little moment coming up. All seems to be good under control. Here we go ahead. I see. I am. Hosting a web application without creating the server. The server gets spindled for you in the back. Yes, that's the app service plan. So it is going to pick up that S1 plan, 1.75 GB. And yeah, this is what the way that the past actually works out. And when it comes to SaaS, we're going to see that in M365. Well, little patience is appreciated. Thank you so much. So here, now my website is going to get created without doing anything. Yes. And uh, now I'll just take a minute or two. Okay, it's getting created. And it will be available world. Yes. We don't want that to be available to the world, right? That control is also possible that you have to work at the security level. So now my past website is coming up. I never created up a server. I, as a developer, I just deployed the application. But yes, you have the existing servers created in the background. You can select those things. But you, as a developer, you're not responsible to install OS, harden that. That's all gone to the Microsoft. 
people will ask you what is difference between pass and sas the difference is here mm -hmm. you are the owner you are responsible for upgradation migrations and troubleshooting sas you are not the owner so you don't need to worry about it you just consume the services and that's it so if i go to the resource and i check the link okay see that it is live so it is absolutely running live now going back to the slideshow so here you see that you have a custom module. People will again ask you, when should I use PaaS? When should I use SAS? So if you have a continuous change happening up in your application, then go ahead and use PaaS. Basically. Sometimes the uh, Amazon comes up with a or web sale, like sales and all that thing. Some, some e-commerce websites coming up with some sales. Yeah. So in such cases, where you have a continuous change happening up in your application and you cannot ask when that will keep on changing because they will not change it from coming down to the next one oh wow this is what actually i was looking out for yeah so when you talk about the cloud services layers yeah. so here uh, okay let me show you here so the blank area you are responsible for that you have to take care in on premises whether it is application data runtime networking everything you have to take care first to last but when it comes to the infrastructure as a service you do not need to worry about the hyper-v servers virtualization technology storage networking that microsoft will take care of it but yes you have that's what you have to do is you have to take care of creating of the virtual machines or uh, the the operating system you have to decide and the data applications then you have to create so the machine which i was showing you i can install oracle i can install sql on that that is our responsibility to do that yeah. now when it comes to pass so you see that till runtime the networking everything is taken care by microsoft so here the operating system was given to us we selected windows or linux that's a tick button the virtualization servers everything so here i have to take care only about my application and the data of it. yes and but when it comes to software as a service so so in, in software as a service the everything belongs here yeah, no not just so in this the uh, data you are responsible for the data that's that's the one that is very very important over here in the software as service, you don't need to worry about anything other than data. Data belongs to you. So here, cloud computing considerations for privacy, compliance, and data protection. So when you talk about privacy, so reading the cloud service providers' privacy notices, how the cloud service provides handles the disaster recovery. These things are very, very important. What it breaches the security. So privacy plays very, very important. And they'll give you all the kind of certifications that are required for you. ISO 9000, ISO 27001, all that numbers which are there. And we can also look out for compliance, like I want to follow HIPAA and other things. And then for the data protections, like password should be there and uh, give the rights as per the requirement. The two things which I was telling you that one was about the old version, classic version, and the ARM. Classic never had a role based access control. Now we are having it in the ARM. And ARM is itself a four, five year old. So what are the key benef business benefits of the cloud computing? Why people are going for it? People are going for the cloud computing is because it has a, a cost effective, scalability is there, elasticity is there, and then it's reliability is there because it is going to give you the uh, um, high availability because when you create a storage also, it will make a replication of it. At least three copies are there, then it will give it to the global label also, six copies that is there. And from the computer perspective also, let me just give you one more good example over here. Uh, basically, I'm from um, India, Mumbai. Um, in India, we have a very famous website called as IRCTC website. Now, this is a, a website which belongs to Indian Railways. And you know that population in India is too high, too much. Yeah. When people want to travel, Indian Railways is one of the reliable yes so people go ahead and uh, book the tickets and when the counter gets open so it is like eight o'clock in the morning okay so everybody wants to book the tickets because it's vacation time and we want to book the tickets 
So there's a huge crowd. And there is a quota, which is called as emergency quota, the call quota, in which people travel daily. So there is a, there are users coming up from there, that uh, category also who have an emergency travel. The model is that everybody logs in at 8 o'clock. Now you see that the servers that we have, if I go ahead and implement some 50, 60 servers, so what, if, what will happen to those 50, 60 servers on Saturday, Sunday, 12 o'clock, or late in the evening hours? Yeah. So I will keep a set of servers, and then I can have a scalability coming up. Auto scale, yeah, scale up. So we, we do have an option of scale out. Yes, yeah, scale out is a horizontal. Scale up is like you can go ahead and increase the memory processes. That's what when I'm talking about scale out. So I want to have a scale out, horizontal scaling, and that's what the word I love over here. So horizontal scaling is like I will add one more server. The CPU processes are not limiting it. They are they're spiking huge people the number of crowd are booking up the tickets. Okay, go ahead and add one more server. Still 10 minutes have been passed and then it has been monitoring. Add one more server, add one more server, add one more server. Now people are starting to bring down, cool down, cool down, cool down, minus, minus, minus. We can do that. So about what evening on Saturday, Sunday. Nobody is gonna log in on Sunday because the ticket booking doesn't happen or if it is half a day kind of thing. All that we can look into about the vertical scaling also possible. You see the elasticity that we have, that is not only that about the server. In fact, when we talk about this uh, web application also, direct web application, the fast space, we can scale out to 20 instances. That's what the plan was telling about that. It has 10 instances, but we have top of 20. We can go for that also. Uh, in fact, uh, what about the database side? Database also can go ahead and have elastic. Yes, I want to increase it because as your servers are increasing and on the back end, the database will die up with that same CPU and memory. Let's go ahead and have an elasticity over there also. So if there is lots and lots of IOPS coming up, huge memory processor usage is there. Let's go ahead and increase that also. That's what it's saying. Always up to date, reliable. It will, it will, we, we give you a backup solution, DR solutions, data replication solutions, so many things that we have over here in this cloud coming. The best thing is that you don't need to worry about the infrastructure. It's taken care of by Microsoft. Yes, ask them, they will take care of Okay, now it is empowering all the employees because what is gonna happen is people can go out and travel and can access those things and promote the collaborations to the accelerating business. There are information workers also who gather information and uses that technology, gain that like uh, insights that they want to go out and have. Then we have first line workers also that we go ahead and play a key role in representing the company's brand and establishing the best customer's experience. Yes. They are the ones which are actually uh, the right uh, for the productivity that they, that they require a lot of uh, enhancement in the productivity side. So let's do a knowledge check coming up. Uh, which term of the list below would be viewed as a benefit of the cloud service? Unpredictable cost? I don't know how the cost is going to come up. Predicted elasticity or a or local reach. This is the benefit elasticity, which I was talking about scale out, scale in, scale up. Yeah, so that's that's one that you could go ahead and do that. That's the best feature that people could ask you why I should do it. We have an elastic city over there. Now, coming down to the second one, okay. Suppose you have two applications, and these two applications that you have uh, are uh, that require a specialized mainframe hardware. Okay, which cloud model will be best? Should we go ahead only for private that is there in our premises, or should we go ahead for public cloud? If I keep only private, I will not be able to use the cloud. So if I go for cloud, I cannot go ahead and use that main trip server in cloud. Can we go ahead and do it in hybrid? Absolutely, yes. We can go ahead and make a use of the hybrid cloud over here. Ta -da! I would have been happy if we'd have got an interactive session. Yes, my students would have given the answer, but you make it on, you answer it over there. Yes. Now coming down over here to the question number three, which cloud service is the best for you? But where is the question? What's my requirement? Oh, here. You are developing an application and want to focus on building, testing, and deploying. Oh, so that means you are building an application. You are a developer. Okay. But you don't want to worry about that hardware or something. Ah, that's too much headache, OS, hardening, network. I don't want that. So should I go for infrastructure as a service or a fast-based or a SaaS-based? 
I will prefer going for the fast pace. The reason is because it is continuous deployment testing is for me. Yeah, so you are gonna do a change. SaaS, the vendor might not change. Yeah, like portal.office.com, if you say that I want to make some changes. Microsoft, we are coming up to change after three months, six months. I want everything change. No, not possible. And those changes will be as per the vendor, not as per. So you want to do a change, you opt for your fast with solution. So the difference between pass and SaaS now is very, very clear that on building and testing and deployment. Yeah. Here we go. So what we learned now in this lesson was about what is cloud computing, um, uh, uh, evolving the IT operation models, then business drivers for the cloud, and how M and we can go ahead and use the tools in M365. So M365, I haven't touched technically. I'm talking overall from the cloud perspective. Yeah. Coming down over here because. Uh, here it says that M365, but I didn't talk. And now I can talk about this. This is coming related to M365. Yes. So what is M365? We generally discussed. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a general overview in this picture that we created here. That M365 is a bundle. It is a suite of products that we have it with us. Yes, but let's go ahead and enter into it. Okay, let's have production and personal organization productivity, different kind of subscriptions. We'll explore that and we'll do a knowledge check. That's the best thing that we have it with us. That's knowledge check. Coming down over here, at the end, we will list the components of Microsoft 365, also known as M365, and understands the value and the available subscriptions options. Yes. So, what are the capabilities that? It, can, it gives you the productivity and theme of capabilities, business management, and the compliance. Also. As we said that, it's a suit of product. So when you talk about the productivity and theme of, so we have a product called as themes. Yes. So along with the sky, we have is now the themes. You know, there we go ahead and have instant messaging, online meetings with themes. Email and calendaring can be also done. So this is Teams is one product. Email exchange is another product. Then we have Office applications. Yes, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Very, very important. Don't take it lightly. Word, Excel, PowerPoint is too important. What about the OneDrive? I want a network drive to be available. I have a huge size of data that is there. Uh, is it that we can't hear? I'm getting up a message from Aliza saying that we can't hear. Okay, just checking up the sound here. Eliza? Okay, let me yeah. check. Let me... Is the sound clear now? Dinesh, the sound is like fluctuating. The volume is fluctuating. It goes in and out. Okay. Uh, that, I, was, um, uh, I was asking, I was going to ask you to probably stay close to the microphone a little bit, and uh, it would be much clearer. Okay, okay. But is that something that students must have missed? You want me to go back to that specific slides or there was a fluctuation in the voice? Maybe the voice modulation I have, if I get excited, it goes high, then it goes low. Yeah, could be because of that. But is it? That excitement is always good, but go on. It's fine now, it's fair, thank you. Okay, so don't worry, there could be some voice modulations and I'm very close to it. Thank you for the feedback so that the, the business doesn't get affected. The student's time is very, very valuable. So, okay, and thank you for that message. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, now coming down here to this that we have, it, I get excited and the modulation goes very high, then it goes low because I need to breathe also, yeah. Could be because of that now looks to be good um let's talk about the productivity uh, and team work so we have one product called as teams the other product is email and calendar that's mess in that emailing uh we can't take office also likely because we require office word excel powerpoint also i need to store some data in the cloud that's one drive coming up into the picture plus i want to have access to the documents yes but it should be secured also sharepoint is the best thing that we could have and we want to have a social network internally for our employees only. That's Yama. Yeah. So we, we see is how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, six products on this side. And now coming down to the business management. So we have endpoint manager. Yes. So this is nothing but the Intune. We do have as a um, business process automations through Power Automate and SharePoint. 
and then we have teams and power platform extensions that you can do you can have a connector through the teams yes and talking about the forms and workflow forms and workflow is really good that where you can go ahead and uh, share the documents also in the form of forms like you want to have some test or you want to have some polling kind of things that's available in the forms and you have is workplace analytics and my analytics power bi i like that power bi very much and then we have is work management with the planner coming down to the right side last one that is identity access we were talking about that as pass sas other than that technically when you see when you're going to enter into the cloud you're going to enter via identity as a service that's the first service that we have because agreed that we will be creating of the mailboxes sharepoint but who's going to use it's the users groups they are the identity so we need to have the identities also there now, so we do have as identity as a, we have an active directory here then we have aip that's azure information protection which let us know that some of the users are using tor browser or somebody has traveled from one location to another is it like that the user logged in from india and all of a sudden the user logging in from uk so give a mfa yeah may I mark it up as risky login or, or somebody is trying a lot on the passwords on that specific account that's aip plus we do have a threat protections like somebody sending up um, uh, attachments phishing attachments that could be also done now we do have a security management also we could see that you can see the security score we have insider risk management compliances now compliance and heed discovery are one like somebody has left the organization and we want to check that okay was it communicated to the customer so we can go ahead and scan the mailboxes through the e discovery that's again pointing it towards the exchange so overall you see that it has 365 degree starting from teams word excel powerpoint graph and many more things here okay now coming down to the next we do have now personal productivity also coming up uh, okay i have to speed up i think so we are running short of time here uh, personal productivity and the organization productivity also can be we can enable teamwork and simplify workflow stay productivity we have uh, ai enabled uh, tools also integrated which will tell you that okay this is what is happening up now because in the background we are using the uh, ai technology yes so you could stay focused and have a few distractions also in that case yeah we have a product called as viva that actually when I'm working up with the teams, it tells me that, okay, this is what it is. The product is like this and on, on specific topics and who is the subject matter expert? What should I learn? What should I do to learn that product really? The same thing is available at the organization levels. Okay, different kind of subscriptions that we have. M365, there are different, different kind of subscriptions that we have. We have uh, M365 for enterprise, then we have for business, for education, and for home. Let me just go ahead and pick up some more important information. Uh, here, going back to the browser. Okay. always always i use this technique this way to go ahead and pick up that pick up the thing that you want and just give docs.microsoft.com and it will be ta -da, like that okay let's talk about different kind of plans formerly called as office 365 you see this yeah let's compare we do have different kind of plans we do have business basic premium uh, oh, these are but in the books there was only four kind of things yes see so many plans we have okay so we have some basic standard and these are my business plans that we have okay so we do have as team communications and all that stuff these are basic ones i want to go ahead and have some more better one do we have some enterprise level also okay the business is on this side and we do have from the home side also so these are from the home perspective yes home users can also buy for their family also that is also possible yes. and you can have a comparisons also done that i need so and so so and so but if i go back to the slideshow this is much more better okay so when you talk about enterprise in this case we get this most of the features threat protect not most all the features that are there in m365 so here 
uh, there are three available plants in this case then you have to do a comparison e3 e5 and f3 so again there is a competition between this so depends upon what customer is looking out for certain features that they say that no no we don't require specific features then you can pick up for e3 which is a lower one that is that you can pick up. coming down to the business part here so if if one of the um, customer comes to me says that hi dk you're working up on azure and i have uh, somewhere around 250 employees which plan will be good for me so opt for microsoft 365 for business and then you have it for the schooling or for the education perspective also so you could opt for this one also and this is for my home users so these are the different kind of things that we have but when you see here, we were looking over here at this uh, basic standard and premium. I'm going to show you enterprise because we're going to work with the enterprise itself. This was just by, uh, I, I just went to the Bing search and that gave me this one. I went, I also saw home education and this one I'll show you. Okay, so this sign up for the free time. Okay, so we will go ahead for the sign up. Um, I think almost uh, one hour has been passed that you are here. Uh, should we go ahead for a tea break for 10 minutes now? Eliza, could you help me out for that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dinesh. So uh, everyone, uh, let's take a very short break. Uh, let's take a 10 minute break. Uh, give me one moment. So as of now, it is 11 a.m. And we can probably come back at uh, 11.10 or 11.12. Uh, I'm going to start the break timer and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, Eliza, you have to click on that number. Um, what is the time that you want? 10 minutes. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Yes. Let's go ahead and start the business now. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, let's give everybody maybe 30 to 40 more seconds to come back and then you can resume. Until then, I will make you the presenter. Super, super, super. Thank you. <laughs> Usually we have something called as Azure Friday and this is Azure Saturday coming. Yes. So welcome uh, back, we everybody. Have multiple, multiple Azure Friday is coming up and pretty sure you're going to be the one hosting them too. So that's good. Uh, that's good. That's cool. I think uh, that's that's the one which the batches run up every Friday. Yes. Yes. Oh, I finished one yesterday. It was started up in the last month, four day program. It was so every Friday it was running up. I, I closed that first delivery of mine. And that was awesome. And uh, uh, Eliza, we have certain more webinars also coming up, right? On 22nd of uh, 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 this month, correct? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we have more webinars coming up. We have a we have a couple of discovery days coming up as well. Um, so I'm going to take everybody through those webinars and free master classes that they can attend towards the end of your class. OK. Oh. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll just keep that buffer time for you so that you could go ahead and uh, drive that and give them valuable information for their next upcoming webinar. OK, so now let's go ahead and talk about this. Explore a Microsoft 365 tenants and offers free trials and uh, business premium. And these are the steps. So in this, they're talking is about the Azure Active Directory and all that. This is really a good point that we can go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little bit out of the box scenario for you from the production perspective. And then we could go ahead and move towards the Office 365, uh, M365. And so you see that I have that habit of saying that Office 365, <laughs> it is M365 now. OK, now coming back here to the, OK. Also, I'm drawing up a scenario for you. I am going to create this on-premises setup, okay, which I already have with me. And in this, I label it. And here is going to be my one of my machine in which AD is installed. Yeah. Active Directory is installed and with some users, um, user Ben, user Eliza. I want that these users to be replicated to the cloud. So where is my cloud? Cloud is over here. It's absolutely a different one color. And inside that, we will have a directory service. Yes, that's the uh, similar thing that we have. But here, you see that we are having AAD. That's, this is called as AAD, Azure Active Directory. So when you talk about AAD, Tenant, domain, directory service, are they same? Yes, they are same, but only the services could be, the, the working will be different, but the buzzwords are same. So here, they all are same. They are representing this triangle itself. So these four names, if you hear it in cloud, it is pointing to this triangle itself. Okay. And where is going to be my M365? My M365 is over here. I'll just make it up as a purple color. Yeah. And I'm going to attach it over here. So finally, who is going to use it? So like users for Exchange, SharePoint. I need those users also, correct or not? So users will be coming up from here, from the on-premises to Azure. And from here, we will be giving them the license. So complete life cycle, I'm going to, the complete, uh, point to point that I'm going to go ahead and do it because you cannot create mailboxes or SharePoint and allow them to authenticate without having the users here. We need identities. So the very first thing that I'm going to create, I'll show you here the domain name also that we have ready with us. So we don't need to worry on this part. This is what is my machine and it is running up as on-premises and the name is m365demo2021.onmicrosoft.com. 
which has Active Directory installed in the on-premises. So intention is like here you are there in your office and you are going to access that mailbox with this username and password. Yes. So I'm just going to go ahead and create few users also. And here we go ahead and say this is about US users. And I can go ahead and create few users. I'm creating it user Ben. Okay, and I'll show you logging in with the mailbox and other things with the same thing. Yes, we have as Eliza now. So customer is saying that I want to go to cloud. So they say that we want to enter into the cloud with the exchange with the M365. Generally, that's what it happens up in the production environments also, that they don't directly start using virtual machines and all those things. Those are resources. They say, first, we want to use the SaaS-based application and M365 is the first one which will get used. But we also require the identity. So here, this is my on-premises. And I'm going to create up a customer account here. So I'm going to use these steps. You could hit a print screen at your end, like how DK is doing it. If I want to onboard a customer to Azure, so I'll create a tenant, create a global admin, and then log in with global admin. Use AD Connect. This is going to take somewhere around two, three minutes. So that this one, and then subscribe. We'll do some shopping. Yes, the word shopping. Eliza is happy to hear this word, right, Eliza? Shopping, shopping, shopping. How many months has happened that you you didn't went to the shopping, Eliza? All must be shut down over there because of COVID. A uh, couple yeah? weeks. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do some shopping here, and we are going to buy M365 license, yes. And we will see that Eliza and Ben starts logging in and start working up with the M365 here. Now, let me just go ahead and create up a tenant quickly here. So this is already I'm having up an Azure one over here. I'm going to jump into the Azure Active Directory. And I can go ahead and create a tenant also. But if I go ahead and subscribe it directly also from that uh, license, I can go ahead. So I'm creating a Azure Active Directory, which is nothing but a tenant. So if you see here that I'm creating a tenant, I repeat the steps. I know I went very fast. Here is my Azure Active Directory button. And I say create a tenant. So this is what I was telling. AAD, tenant, they all are same words. Next to it, and here I'm just gonna give M365 demo 2021. Okay, I'm gonna now use this. Okay, M365 demo 2021, and I'm hosting this in the United States. Wow, so simple. Active Directory getting created here, Azure Active Directory. Yes, it's a pass based kind of a solution, so that means. Customer will enter in Azure through this way. Absolutely. So I created up a customer account. Customer, I onboarded a customer. Customer, you are onboarded on Azure. Your account is getting ready. Okay, send me the username and password. Or I will create again a separate username and password for you. Currently, uh, the one uh, my account is there. I cannot share my username and password. So we'll create a customer username and password for this. Here I'm just gonna go ahead here. I'm going to say that we created up a tenant. How could I confirm that we are there in the right tenant? We want to work in that. So you see that currently I'm in DKAZ104. So this was my yesterday's Azure Friday batch. Yeah. So this is my uh, DKAZ104 dot on Microsoft. You could see that last line on that domain is equal to so. 
again tenant aad domain directory service they are all same they see that it is done so if i want to go ahead and uh, i want to show you here that here i have some machine subscriptions and everything over here but if i go ahead and want to switch now i can switch from one domain to another so why my domain is not visible i have to do a f5 here so i'll do a quick f5 And now I'm switching from one tenant, from one directory service to this. Wow. So customer could have multiple domains? Yes, because the customer has acquired a company and they say that we want to keep it separate. Why not? So all possible. So this is the entry point that the customer is onboarded to Azure. But I have to give the account to customer in that case. So I'll create one account. And I'm going to create one account over here. And uh, customer says, OK, give me a account name as cloud admin okay so i'll just go ahead and create a cloud admin account yes throw a little down and just get the name and I'll set the password and i'm gonna give rights to this user because it it belongs to them I'll make the topmost right over here that is called as global administrator. Yes. So I'm just going to select this one and say create. So I'm granting the roles. I will sign out and ask customer to log in and confirm that, sir, madam, are you able to log in? Please confirm your login over here. So I'll just go down here to what's this and I say cloud admin. And dot com microsoft dot com okay it is asking me for password it will also ask me to change because it's the first time login customer will say that yeah i want to change my password okay here we go i'll say sign up and this is what the sign in comes in now. Customer is very excited. Yes. Customer says that. Yeah. Okay. So you see that customer domain m365 demo 2021.on microsoft.com why this small dot on microsoft.com is coming can we remove it yes we can get it removed but you need to be the owner of the domain whatever the domain name that you want to keep it if you want to keep it as dot com then we have to go here and make some changes on this side that's the custom domain name so you can add the domain name they'll ask you to create some text records in your dns and do the changes so it's easy but you should be the owner that's that's the challenge. <laughs> okay, coming back to the business. Um, so customer is logged in also with the GA account. Let me just check. Okay, this is done. And here also it is done. But customer says, where are my accounts? I want to go ahead and do that also after that. Once the accounts come in, then we'll do the shopping. Okay, so we will now go to this on-premises machine says that I want all these accounts, Eliza and all these accounts to be there. Currently, there is only one account that I could show it to you that's available. Azure Active Directory, and that's about the users. So this is what is one is my SAM user through which I created this, and this is the customer account, actually. Customer logs in via this account. OK, sounds good. All looks to be fine now. So far, so good. So I'm going to use one tool called as AV Connect. I'm going to download this. Here is the one. I'm going to scroll down. I'm just going to take two or three minutes to run this. I'm going to go through an express way, not through the uh, customized way. I promise you, next three or four minutes, 
when and Eliza's network will be there in the cloud. And after that, we'll do shopping. Yeah. I could see smile on Eliza's face. Yeah. Eliza says, yeah, DK, we want to do shopping. Long time. And many students over here. Yeah. Okay. So give me the account. Account name is cloud admin at .microsoft.com. says that you should be a global administrator. You remember that I was talking about this as global administrator. That's the reason that I've done it. So it's all done now, asking me the local username and password. So I'll give that also. It says that the domain name are not matching. OK, continue. We, will, we can fix that later on also. And just do a countdown of a minute or two. Max two minutes, I think, so it should not take much time. It's installing that synchronization service. And is it a one-time uh, utility? No, every 30 minutes it is going to synchronize. So if you do some change, it will go ahead and reflect. So you keep on adding users to the group. Just keep on renewing. It will update there. Same to same replica is going to come up over there of the identities. Yes. I'm also going to come up now. And, and I want to show you, by the time this goes ahead, the Active Directory, which I created, OK, is actually a free one. Yeah. So when we do the shopping, so here you see this. This is Active Directory free. And uh, when we buy out M365, this should become premium two. Yeah. Because in that, uh, it has that option of premium two. So let's say that you'll get that. So synchronization service is going on. In latest two, three minutes, we should be able to see this. I said come down of two minutes. Now I'm going back to two, three minutes. DK, this is wrong. Be confident about it. I am confident. Not more than two minutes it is going to take. But every time I'll say that two minutes, two minutes. I'm just going um, on, a, on a mute for a while till it completes. I'm there in the class. There in the class. Don't worry. Just waiting for this one to get finished. And uh, once it creates the account and it starts synchronizing, and it works fine in that case. Yes. So, Eliza, your account should come down to the cloud. And after that, we will do the shopping of Exchange, SharePoint, and all that. But not about that. Uh, yeah. The other shopping that you do, yeah, correct. The nail polish and all that. <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry no, for that. I was, I was looking more forward to the uh, Xbox and some video games. Thanks. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Super. So in the weekend, I think so. You'll go ahead and buy it. Some of the online companies have started deliveries now. Because in India, it has started. What about uh, at your location? Amazon is working. Yeah. Oh, super. That's good. We're just waiting for this to get completed and almost at the edge. We will be able to see Ben's and Eliza's account to cloud. And from there, M365 and the licensing part also, which I promised you that I'll do my best to cover it up for you. Yes, this is almost the last stage of it. Almost, 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 yes. Once this comes up, we are through. But we are, uh, I, I still did an expressway. If I would have taken custom, then in that we take long, long, long. Yeah, uh, time explaining it, especially in MS500 course that you could opt for it. So I go ahead and say exit to it. And I wanted to confirm things over here in the synchronization service, which is if I get an export option, I will be confident. Uh, you see that this is still in progress. So now it is it is importing the data and doing the synchronization. Once I get an export button here, it will be done. 
yes one export is still pending and if that comes up we will be good to go ahead and that is in progress ben's account and eliza's account must be getting created what about groups that is also possible so it is done now if i go back here and i say accounts not yet done i will press the magical button f5 yeah here we go and you see that Azure AI logo has also got changed. I like this one. Ah, oh, Eliza and Ben's account is over here. Ta -da! Yeah. So my on-premises uses it. I show you the diagram that we were discussing. So Ben's and Eliza's account are over here. If I subscribe Office 365 now, I can go ahead and do it. So if I want to subscribe Office 365, I have a fantastic web-based tool over here. And that's called as admin.microsoft.com so i can go ahead and pick up that admin.microsoft.com or i can say portal.microsoft.com that is also there in that case let's say portal.office.com if i am admin then i can so it's a web based tool it will pick up the active directory users from here and it will attach it to the mailbox because mailboxes, teams, they require users, correct? So we need a connectivity. So this tool is there. This is a web-based API which will help us out to go ahead and do that connectivity and start mapping it. Yeah, I'm just a step away. Portal.office.com. Speaking of auth authentication. And I'm going with this domain, cloud admin domain. And let's do now some shopping. But before I go ahead and I jumped into admin.microsoft.com, there's an option to select the admin. That button comes up if you are a global admin. Otherwise, you will not use that button. I am now going to go ahead and subscribe. If I would have gone directly to the M365 subscription, so tenant concepts, and from where the users are coming up, that you wouldn't have come to know like a production environment. Here, you see that if I click over here, it will fetch the users. And there in M365 admin center, I could see Aliza, Eliza, Ben. So from there, it is actually, um, we are over here, and it is, it is picking up from here and displaying it to us in this center portal. Now we'll go ahead and buy M365. So here, we'll go to the billing and we'll say purchase services. And I'm gonna purchase something. I'm gonna do some shopping, yes. And I'm gonna create Microsoft 365. Just gonna go ahead. Or I can opt for that also. That's the one. And I have different different plans. You see, this is very good plan in which Office 365 comes up, EMS comes up, everything is coming up. And this is month to month. This is for the yearly. I'm gonna go to the details. Once I get into the details, I'll get an option of trial. I can I can subscribe it from there. Yes. Here we go. I'm just removing the screen for the OTP perspective, so don't mind on that part. Yeah. That's from the security perspective. Just I'm completely we have a lockdown, so some some numbers messages running up in the background, some emergency sounds. I'm back here and going for try now here. I added the OTP code. So I'm just going for a try now option. It should give me that option to go ahead and move ahead. 
little screen looks to be hanging. And once I go ahead for this, you see that this button, okay, this is moving on. It is going for the checkout and I say continue. And when you're doing it, so you should be a little patient. I, I saw that moving up at the top. And here, now I should get my products. And here comes up all the products, all the licenses and everything. So here you see that Azure Active Directory, Exchange Teams. If you wait for a while, you'll get a big list of the products. Yeah. So these are the products, all admin centers that it is building up for us. Still, if you wait for a few more minutes, I cannot see SharePoint over here. SharePoint should also come up for you. And my Azure Active Directory has also come up here, which is going to be the next level of Azure Active Directory. If I go back here and I check out to this site, to Azure Active Directory, and I want to see the Ah, I got that premium too. Wow, thank you, Microsoft. So fast, so super, super fast. And here, you see that this purple color, I attached it to this one. Now I can go ahead and assign the licenses to the users. Yes, this is the way that we are going to work in this case. Um, just give me a minute. I want to show you something more in this case. Here's the portal for it, yes. So we go ahead and log into admin.microsoft.com. And here, the, as I keep on refreshing the screen, I will be able to get more and more options on this side. So what is M365? Actually, technically, it is nothing but a set of products that you could have. There are different, different kind of licenses that you see. Let me just click on show all. And here is all my admin centers. All my admin centers are over here. And if I go back to the slideshow, uh, let me show you the licenses that I can assign. This is going to be my exchange. Mm -hmm. And if I want to go to Teams, that's what it is all about. Uh, the two applications, I'm just opening it here. How to quickly rush up to the other two modules also that I have. So it is loading. Uh, says that looks like you don't have a permission. I am the one who actually activated global administrator and was a matter of refresh. I'll sign out and sign in once again, but that's not a problem. Here is my Teams admin center. So the Teams um, team, it has come up. I can manage Teams policies. I can go ahead and work with that. I can create channels also. That's what uh, we have it over here. Now, if I check on this side, I got this page now. No, again, you need to check why that is coming up. Maybe some permissions. I'm confident that this building it is taking a little time for it. Yes. But let me just go back and give some uh, licenses to the users. I want to assign some licenses over here to the users. So tricky here to hold it and drag it towards the upward side. So if I go to the active users, now which are these users? These are my on premises users. I can go ahead and give them license. Currently, uh, Eliza doesn't have license. Ben doesn't have license. Can I go ahead and do a bulk licensing? Absolutely possible. Why do you go ahead and uh, license it by one by one? You can go ahead and do that. So let me just go ahead and uh, license it. That's my OneDrive also coming up. I go ahead and say, take the license, save the changes. Saving it, and it is done. OK. What about Ben? I'm assigning for Ben also. And in fact, I can show you the login purpose also. You'll find that the same passwords, but actually I used it in my own premises. In Azure, we never created any passwords, correct? So the passwords are actually coming from on premises. That's what happened up when you are also working up with your company's mailbox. 
So the licenses have been assigned here, full licenses. Can I go ahead and give half licenses to somebody? Yes, I don't want Mailbox or some SharePoint to another vendor. But what about the cost? Cost you need to pay. You don't want to give, that is fine. But the cost is you start picking up the license, it's a bundle license, so you cannot say that. No, uh, if I disable certain features, uh, that's not it's it's not going to work in that way once you assign a typical license you have to pay the full money for that. that's the hard fact of it and uh, coming over here to exchange let me check if exchange is working or not because sometimes it takes a long time to go ahead and uh, open up that. Yeah, that's what I was doubting on it. And you will see that here. I have the recipients also. I have the mailbox. Oh, I selected the license for Eliza and she has a mailbox also. So simple. If I assign a license, the mailbox gets created. Yes. And if I wait for a few more minutes, Ben's uh, mailbox will, will be also created and can access that mailbox and can have a mail exchange between them. That's what we Okay, coming down to the next one, let me just go ahead to the slideshows also, otherwise we'll miss out. Okay, we have done that attendant. Okay, knowledge check. Which of the following 365 subscription option is appropriate under 300 employees? For 300 employees, you remember that I was talking about that somebody comes up and says that 250 employees I have, which one should I go ahead for it? Enterprise, that's too high. Education, learning perspective. Business is the right one. Okay. Coming down to the next one, knowledge check two. Okay, for the knowledge check two, we have is e file license, the one which we purchased, but not in three. Which of the following features are included in e file, but not in e three? We picked up as e file, and I remember that ATP. Yes, ATP is there with us in this case. Yes, I'll show you that also here quickly, and not take much time. I get excited here. I'll show you this here. When I went for all tools, all admin centers, see this ADP, it is talking about that, yeah, and the security features. This is not there in E3. We have it in E5, so we were lucky to get that. Yeah. Coming down to the third one, okay, endpoint manager is part of which capability of M365? It's a productivity business or security. I think it's part of your business. Yeah. Because productivity doesn't come up and teamwork be because those are individual users. And uh, the security and compliance also doesn't come up related to that. Uh, business management is the correct one. OK, so that's what we have it in lesson number two. We are going to jump into the lesson number three, select the cloud deployment. So here. Which cloud deployment you should pick up the hybrid model? Which model to choose? Migration to Office 365 and do a knowledge check. Um, <clears throat> at the at the end of this lesson, uh, so you'll understand the terminologies associated while adopting this uh, to cloud service, and we'll also understand the difference between cloud only and hybrid models, so so that we can decide on this part. Yeah, and uh, this will help you out when an organization wants to move to the systems with the older operating systems and office directly into it instead of upgrading it. So hybrid model. So you have hybrid, hybrid cars. Is it like the top end fashionable hybrid cars that we are talking about? No. Any technology which is two together, join them together, makes it up as hybrid model. Like you have a car with uh, petrol and uh, uh, with a gas engine, CNG. Yeah. So that is also a hybrid car. Yeah. So I have an online plus on-premises. When you join them together, that's hybrid. Certain uses here, certain uses here, you are in hybrid. So that's why the hybrid is a combination of cloud services with on-premises and to your IP uh, to support your IT needs. So which model to choose? If you're looking out for cost saving, if you're looking out for security, reliability, compliance, if you're looking out for functionality perspective, you should go ahead for for the cloud itself, yeah. And if you have already invested lots and lots of money in hardware, then you can go ahead for the uh, for the hybrid kind of things. Like recent hardware investment is done, or if you have a outdated hardware and you want to use it, or you have a limited in-house IT resources and you have available capital, so that you can you can spend some money on the on-premises and rest you can give it to the cloud. Itself. 
Okay, now coming down to the uh, migration to M360, but there are two models. One is migration for cloud only and the coexistence. So these are the ones. Migration means that moving everything from old system to the new system. That is what is your migration. And when you talk about the coexistence, coexistence is one which is like uh, um, you have certain things down and certain things in Azure. So like kind of a hybrid model. That is where the coexistence comes up into the picture. Like certain users in on-premises, certain users in Azure. I, I moved out uh, Ben and um, Eliza, but there are many users who are still in on-premises. The user accounts could get migrated, but not their mailboxes. The mailboxes are different uh, resources. They are still in a mixed mode. That is nothing but the coexistence. Coming down over here to the knowledge check. That was quickly small lesson that we had. Okay, which of the following organization does a hybrid deployment? Okay, who does? Who wants to go for hybrid? Is it a, a NGO, small uh, small nonprofit organization, or a new business, or an established with a data center? With the established data center, absolutely right. You are. You gave correct answer. Yes. Because nobody at the start wants to go ahead with a new business with the with the hybrid model or NGOs kind of organization does nonprofit doesn't want to go ahead for that itself. Coming down to the uh, check two, check two is for uh, okay. Which of the following statement about migration versus coexistence is true? Okay, so coexistence is for cloud only deployments and migration is for hybrid deployments. No. Migration is for cloud deployments and coexistence for the hybrid deployments. Migration and coexistence both work for cloud deployments only. Yeah. Both actually work for cloud deployments. I can do the migration for cloud deployment. I can coexist for the cloud. And so let's see. Uh, coming down to the summary here. OK. So we do have now. OK. This lesson. Oh. Module one is over, so I have module two and three coming up. Um, Eliza, you're there? Yes, Dinesh, I'm here. Okay, so I have out of three modules, one module I have completed. Can I have somewhere four minutes breathing break? Short oh, yes, one? absolutely. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure the audience uh, would probably like that as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, students and everybody in the class. Eliza, you could add the timer also in there. Thank you. Eliza, you are adding the screen? Yes, I'll add it. Just give me a minute. Thank you so much.
Okay, DK is back. What about you? Yeah, good, good, good. Thank you so much. And I'm again back, full of energy. Yes, I can go ahead and now uh, uh, start with the module two. Module one is done. Mm -hmm. And we are just jumping now to the module two here that we have. Okay, let me just start with module 250. Okay, so here we go. And then let's talk about the productivity and the teamwork capabilities that we have it with us. You remember the first, uh, in, the, in the module one, we were talking about productivity, business, and there was one more third category that was talking about, yeah. So those three are now divided into each, each module. So the first one, yeah, because here, if, if I just go back here to the slide one. So one slide two. So here, you see the productivity and teamwork. Then we talk about business. Then we talk about security and compliance. So we're just going to hit this now, productivity and teamwork capabilities. Yeah, this is what it is. The logic is here. So those three points are there. The three points gets covered up and the licensing gets covered up. Course gets over. Now coming down to the productivity and team capabilities here. So what are we going to learn in this case? We're going to talk about the solutions that we have and getting done more with the office and uh, engage employees with Stream, Teams, and Yammer. And we're going to talk about the file storage and sharing with OneDrive and the shipper. Yeah, coming down over here quickly. But uh, we'll talk about the productivity and the teamwork. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how we could go ahead and engage employees, and then uh, we could go ahead and explore the chat. So let's see that. At the end of this module, you'll see that empowers the users with the tools that they want to go ahead and work with them. Yes. So you can, you can see the engaging of the employees. You can make them communicate with the IM chat, and you have uh, stay in touch with the email that you can be productive from anywhere. This is the mobile client. And then we talk about empower everyone, store shares. That's one online. That's one drive. And we have as this uh, teams again coming up over here. That's fine. It's a power app coming up over here. So here, explore chat. So we can have one to one or in a group. We can eliminate email clutter. We can have open discussions. Yeah, we can share the screens. We can chat from the mobile devices. That's that's part of your teams. Okay. Now coming down to the host online meetings with teams, you can you you must be already using teams. That's very famous. Yeah. You can have the live events also going on. Okay, coming down to the uh, email and calendaring, you can get stay connected, customize your email, simplify the end. So it's very easy now that when you come up to the Office 365, it's, it's quite easy that you just assign the license and start working up directly. Then you can have the uh, office across all the devices. So you could have it on mobile. You can also have it on your desktops, that the computers that you want it to be there. And uh, yeah, work intelligently. Yeah. So we'll talk about the file storage and sharing. So we can have work from anywhere. We can collaborate that OneDrive or SharePoint. And you can have a, a security also configured to it. So, yes. OK. Now, this is really a good point that uh, Microsoft has added that uh, we have accessibility investments in Office 365 because there are certain users who are who are having some or other issues. We are lucky that we don't have vision, hearing, or there might be certain users. So Microsoft has taken care of that also. And if, if I show you here that it really shows all the good features that M365 is having. Just give me a minute. I will come up to that accessibility features. OK, not this one. OK, so some of the users might have a hearing issue. So if they have some hearing issues in the teams that they, they could have those uh, reading coming up, yeah, subtitles coming up. Yeah, I, sometimes I forget. Yeah, sorry for that. I was, I was remembering that Netflix. Oh, my wife shows me Netflix always. And that, that subtitles to be changed. I recollect it. So here, if you have a hearing issue, then you can have a subtitle going on. And then you could have a learning also going on here when you have a learning issues that so it supports you that. OK, it in fact gives you live captions and transcripts here. Here the documents post and even chats read aloud. Yeah. So if you have a, a view issue, then you can have here those documents 
documents a reader is also there we can have a vision issue also then we can connect and accessibility checker in powerpoint word excel yes in word excel also that you have a vision support coming down to the mental health also yeah how does it support hybrid work recharge and build stronger team connections and gives you a productivity in how productivity insights in Microsoft Teams. And if you have a mobility issue, so you can have start number list, somebody could go ahead and add a word to it. You can integrate, yeah, use a voice to engage it. And you can have an if somebody has neurodiversity issues, like uh, you can raise hands, background noise suppressions, and all that stuff also is there. So these are really good features that we have with us. Okay, coming down here, you want to hold a weekly meeting with your team and are all based in the different locations. So which is good? PowerPoint, Teams, or SharePoint? Huh? SharePoint? Huh? What do you say? No, 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 I heard that. No, I heard that. No, I cannot hear, but I can say that. My students are saying that it is Teams. Absolutely. I can I can give you some, but it's one way only, so I cannot give anything. Sorry for that. Okay, just kidding. Coming back to the knowledge check too here. So uh, you have been asked to recently manage a, a project uh, to, that includes people from inside and outside your organization and want to share files with everyone. Okay, so when you want to share files with everybody, um, OneDrive is a good one that you can share it. Good. Next one is, uh, we talked about that now, right? Uh, coming down here to the, uh, again, to improve collaboration and teamwork, uh, what you can do, Word, Teams or OneDrive, collaboration is there. Teams, Teams is the one that you could go because you could collect people and collaboration and teamwork. So teamwork points to the teams. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a fourth question also coming up. Okay, so we have is now launching a product, a new product that they're launching and they wanna go ahead for major online event. So where they should go ahead and host, where where people speaking video, the public can also speak and plus videos could also be done. So it should go ahead on uh, Yammer, Teams and Stream, or it should be Teams, SharePoint and Stream. Where should we go ahead? Mm, your organization it is, no? So it could be pointing to this, it should be pointing to this. And your team, SharePoint and Stream is the one that could, that could be the one. Okay. Now coming down to the lesson two, we can engage the employees through streams, teams, and Yammer. So yeah, streams, streams, Yammer, that means we are going on this. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and engage the employees now. What is actually stream over here? We'll just quickly look into teams. We have already seen that, so I'll quickly jump over here. We are running short of time also. We have to cover up. And then I have to give time to Eliza also. Okay, so we can go ahead and chat and create team channels, instant messaging. We can have voice calls, video calls also in this, where we can have a team meeting going on in the class. Yes. And uh, coming down over here, this is amazing. When you get the materials, don't miss out this one. This is really, really good one. Yes, this is interactive, right? So what I'm gonna do is, if I click over here on this page, I'll try to add a mute here so that uh, we don't get a sound here. And here it is loading. Um, I go here. And this In is... this interactive guide, you'll get to know Microsoft Teams, the mm -hmm. hub for team collaboration in Office 365. Okay. You'll see how Teams integrates the people, content, and tools your teams need to be more engaged and effective. Just watch this video. To moment. navigate this interactive guide, Follow the prompts on the okay. screen so or it is, use your forward and back yeah. arrows. So it is asking me to click here. The video is paused. Now they will teach you actually what you need to do. So click here. In Microsoft then, Teams, a team is a workspace where a group of people can collaborate. Here, that's the one. It is asking this me is to the do. recruitment channel. So and every agent. time it will it'll ask me to do this. And return to team. Yeah. So here, it is asking me to go ahead and tap. So this is Let's really a good one. So that's what they Under are trying to do. It. Meet now. So here, yeah, that's what we, that teams, teams meetings are a great way for teammates to come together. Just stop this. That's really, really a good guide that we have. So it is asking you to tap it over there. It's a video plus labs also interactive guides. Yes. When you get the material, don't forget to collect and practice it. There are four or five, and I like that very much over here. Okay, online meetings with teams. We can schedule multi-party meetings, meeting devices, and all that. Yeah, we can record, we can go for automatic transcriptions of the videos, and we can see the live events also running. Okay. 
moving down to the next one okay so they're asking us to go ahead and do that once again set up and manage meetings in team i don't want to do that now because here it is going to take a long time for me to run that video but you don't miss that chance for the interactive nights yes i am in chat we can go ahead and have one to one chat group chat that you could go ahead and see now what is yammer yammer is nothing but like a social networking but only for insiders yeah like only for the employees not for the external users where we could go ahead and share that information we can create the networks we can go ahead and see okay what uh, uh, eliza's uh, uh, skills are there i i want to look at that what is our core strength all that things and, and there are reports available which can give me the monitor usage also fantastic uh, reports are there in the ml for that okay now coming down to the stream stream when you talk about is uh, you can run the videos basically in this you can create and manage the contents you can have the control access you can have the audit logs you can discover that also and you can uh, stream with the other apps so you want to run some videos you want to do some streaming you can use microsoft stream now coming down to the next one okay and in the teams you can go ahead and extend tabs so if you want to add some applications also so you can go ahead and add some tabs also here that you can go ahead and add some applications yeah that's the one that you could go ahead and add. extend teams with the connect with the extensions and bots yeah i can go ahead and add bots also here i'm a i'm a developer and i create bots chat bots are my favorites and in that uh, we have this polite bot and uh, professional bot yeah friendly bot different kind of bots that and in fact we can extend teams with the power platform also so this will actually enhance the productivity of your uh, of your employees that's what it's trying to go ahead and say uh, as uh, how can power apps application can be added to teams by creating a tab right that's what it is i'll try to cut down this check now because we are running short of time sorry for that i'll keep going ahead otherwise we have to keep extending it yeah so coming to the lesson three now uh, once we get into the training programs at that time we can learn into that more um get more done when when the, you have the office across so you have to explore what are the different kind of applications you have what are different ways to deploy that and update the apps yeah at the end you will actually identify the applications examine how to deploy examines how to deploy uh, how the apps are updated and service okay so you have different kind of apps. If I, if I log in here and I show you here in my portal, uh, let me just go ahead and log into portal.office.com. OK. Here you see that these are my applications, which has come up automatically because we have a subscription for that. These are my applications, and all applications can be also seen. More and more applications are listed out over here. Super. And there are options that we can go ahead and install that also on the machines. Yes. Now, coming down to this slideshow. OK, so you can have connected experience with the office also. Okay, what users can do is user can add the data insights and similar features. So if we want to add some comments and other things, experiences that download online content. So experiences come up over here. I'm just parking that for it. I don't want to give any wrong answer for that. Yeah. Okay, deployment methods for Office 365. So I can click on that deploy to run and I can deploy from a local source. I can download it and then install it. Or I can use SCCM, my favorite product from on, on premises perspective that we can go ahead and deploy that also. Coming down over here, one more uh, interactive guide coming up over here. So I can go ahead and click, click, click and I can do that installation. And now coming down to the updates part, there are types of updates. You can choose update channel for your organizations. You check how updates are getting installed and location for distributing that applications that you want to go ahead. And you can create a pilot test group before uh, updating it for the whole organizations that you can go ahead. And these are the channels, monthly channel, semi-annual channel, and semi-annual enterprise channels are also there. Yeah. Again, the check is coming up. So skipping check, sorry for that. So now coming down to the file storage and the sharing with the OneDrive, I truly like that check. I, I don't want to miss it, but time is really, really concerned. And it's a Saturday also for you guys. So file storage and sharing up with the OneDrive. So we can talk about that OneDrive here. And uh, OK, 
So why deploy OneDrive? Because you can access files from all our devices, then you can share that inside or outside organizations, and uh, you can have a deep integration with uh, collaboration with SharePoint also, and then quickly find the files that matters most and protect your experience. Uh, protect your files with enterprise grade security. You have a, a known folder move, OneDrive files on demand, attachments, and there's so many good features that we have it over here in OneDrive. And coming down to this, uh, oh, again, interactive lab coming up. So you can you can check out that if, we, if you'll be very lucky to get these things about that. Now coming down to the SharePoint and Office 365. Why is there advantage of that interactive labs? Because you don't need to create a subscription. So you want to practice. You can click, click, click. You can understand the topic, and then you can actually practice the labs ten times also. SharePoint and N 365. So again, it is the same. SharePoint that we were having into non premises. Similar features are available there in the cloud also for this. Now, coming down over here, that build sites and pages are there. You can co author documents, sync and store files in cloud so that they can work sync. And in fact, you can go ahead with the uh, uh, with the search also. Yeah, you can have a search that if a user in cloud, some of the users are in cloud, some of the users are non premises, and we want to have a, a search between two data, between two. Search in the, uh, between the two share points, we can go ahead and find the data. That also. So going ahead with the knowledge check. So here my module two also gets over. Um, Eliza, can I go ahead for the third module also? Oh yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and jump into the third module. That's about the business management that we are talking about, and we will see that what are the business management tool. Again, uh, if I go back to the first slide, okay. There's the first slide. This is the second one. And yeah. So now we are entering into the business management. Yeah. The last one is the security. This we are doing it now. This is the last module that we are covering it up now. OK, module three. I'll try to quickly finish it up so that Eliza could go ahead and give you more and more information about it. So talking about business management capabilities that we have over here, OK, so we do have is uh, how M365 can empower that, uh, uh, your employees, uh, your organizations with the tools that they have and the business management solutions that we're going to talk. We're going to talk is about the Intune. Yes, Endpoint Manager. Again, one of my favorite. Why favorite? DK, you said that your favorite is SCCM. Now you're saying Endpoint Manager. So they are integrated. That is the reason, again, that we can integrate Intune and SCCM together. Yes. And uh, we'll be also talking about WVD. WVD is nothing but your uh, Windows virtual desktops. And uh, we'll be also talking about business intelligence that we have with us. Coming down to the lesson number one that we have it with us is business management solutions. OK, we'll talk about the uh, productivity, how productivity actually gets enhanced over here in this case, because uh, here we have is work analytics. We can have a security uh, secure score also coming up. And the process management is much, much simpler over here with this. Seriously, when you when you go ahead and work with Office 365, you, there are so many tools that you're going to use it. And in this, when it comes to the word Intune, wow, my mobile devices, really, really, mobile devices management comes up into the picture for that. So here we do have as uh, Intune that we can co-manage that uh, Intune and SSCM together. We do have this desktop analytics coming up. We do have this. We can go for pilot. We don't want to set up and uh, uh, take all the users to the uh, Intune. We want to go ahead and have certain devices to Intune. So why only the mobile devices? Can I go ahead and take computers also? Yes, we can go ahead. So we can go for Windows Autopilot also. And we can also go ahead and work with uh, integrate this with the Active Directory also. So we have AAD coming up over here because finally your users, groups, and the multi-factor authentication lies up over here. And that's my endpoint uh, uh, admin center also. So I'll open up that very shortly here. So we can go ahead and uh, uh, also talk about the automation that you can do it with the SharePoint workflows. You can have use Power Automate also, and you can use Power Apps also. So they are automated buttons scheduled. Uh, you can go for the business process and the user interfaces. So these are kind of things that you can go ahead and use it also with M365. Yeah. Process automations can be done. So rather than creating of the workflows, I find Power Automate is good. 
Okay, again, the extensibility comes up with uh, Microsoft Teams. Office add-ins can be also installed, like earlier we used to have PDFs and all that. That was add-ins, now that comes up. So, so many add-ins are there. You have the SharePoint framework and you can have a graph also. Earlier this was uh, only graph, now it has been changed to Microsoft Graph. So this gives you an API. Uh, uh, this gives you a sort of, uh, your APIs can connect to the graph and can fetch the data. So you can have a business intelligence with Microsoft uh, Excel and with the Power BI. You can have the planner also, you can have board, charts, schedule that you can work on. So many things are there. Okay. So <laughs> just one, one, uh, Eliza, I'm taking this question over here. What is Microsoft Secure Score? It's a measurement uh, of an organization security posture, antivirus or a firewall. It's of security posture. That's my favorite one that we have. Let me just go ahead to the next one now. That we have. Simplify the device management with endpoint management. Yes, I want to go ahead and use MDM tool that is um, MEM, that is endpoint manager that we have. So here, when you talk about this, is uh, MEM is nothing but your SSEM, and this is what is your Intune. So you could say, yeah, this. I'm so sorry. This is MEM is your Intune. And this is what MECM is your SSEM. Yeah. So let's go ahead and see that now what we have in this lesson. I'm going to go a little slow in this case. Yeah. So what are the benefits of the modern management? So you have an easy way to deploy because the mobile devices nowadays are at home. They are always roaming. Plus the computers, the laptops, which are also in roaming, it's it's now easy to deploy the applications on them and to manage them also. And they, are, they can be always up to date because I can post the patches on them and keep it secure. Yeah. And I can I can uh, go ahead and build. There are built-in securities, but I can go ahead and create my own policies also, which I can push it on those machines or those mobile devices. And we can have a proactive insights also coming from that. So what is actually endpoint manager over here? So here, if you see that it is Microsoft Intune called as endpoint manager. You have a connector for your Active Directory for your Exceed and your connect and your Intune certain um, certificate connector here. You can actually go either ideally you can go ahead with Intune or you can go ahead with the commands. Let me just show you here. So I can point it towards play only with Intune, or you can have Intune with SSEM. So we can join them together and have a management. Now this is what is the admin center. Do I have an admin center with us? Yes, why not? So if I go to the admin button here. Okay. Took a little time to refresh, but yes, it is done. Okay, so this is what is my office M365. Uh, this is, and um, if I look over here, and I scroll down, I scroll down. That's the one endpoint manager. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have any spare mobile. Otherwise, I would have registered my mobile in two minutes. And I can show you the mobiles coming up in Azure. In two. So here, my devices will be listed. My Windows laptops will come up over here. And uh, my Android devices, my especially my mobile phones, will be coming up over here in this category. I can have Mac OS. I can have iPads also. And who can actually enroll the devices? Enrollments can be done by the enrollment managers. Generally, we go ahead and do that by adding the users itself. And you see that I can do an auto and automatic enrollment also that the machines which are in Azure, like users came in Azure, groups came in Azure. If the computers come in Azure, they can do an automatic enrollment. Yes, very easy one that we can do. And for the uh, registering it in Play Store, it is I just supply a username and password, and it is done. And go to the Play Store, look out for Intune Company Portal, and supply the username and password. Your mobile is over. Here. So easy, so nice it is over here. I really love working up with MEM and MECM. Okay, so that's what it is. Intune is nothing but MDM, Mobile Device Management, and Mobile Application Management also there. It's not only for the MDM, it is MAM also, yeah. 
So we can push the applications also. And you see that we have as SCM. So let me just draw this, show you this one. So this portion is my Intune portion that is there with us. Okay, and I have an Intune console coming up over here. And here are my mobile devices reporting to it. And this is this scenario down the line is all my SSM. So this side is all my SSM. So you see that Microsoft Configuration Manager, here I'm sitting up on the control of SSM and I'm having some applications also. So all the computers, these computers which are there and whatever I'm having it over here. So assume that, sorry, the clients are over here. These clients will actually get uh, registered to Azure AD. And once they're there in Azure AD, it will be seen in the Intune. That's what we have it in this. Okay, coming down to zero autopilot, uh, autopilot zero touch deployment. Suppose if I want to go ahead, the devices which are there in Azure Active Directory or via hybrid join, I can auto enroll them together so that, plus I can go ahead and create the profiles for them. Okay, then we have a knowledge check coming on. Let me just jump into the get more done and stay secure with Windows 10. Okay, let's talk about this for now. So oh, we have Windows as a service, fantastic. We see the deployment methods, updates, and release, and WVTH. So at the end, we have as Windows as a service that we'll understand, and what are the capabilities of WVD? That's a virtual desktop coming up in Azure itself. So we can go ahead as a feature updates, quality updates that are there, and we can go for the servicing channels. So you can go ahead for, and uh, updates. Basically, you're updating of the Windows machines, and you can have a deployment rings created where you create a group of devices that are used for piloting it and testing of those things. It's nothing but the feature updates and the quality updates that you want to give it. And you can select the channel, whether it is one month, six months. So you're updating of the Windows. Because nowadays, your Windows are coming up in the form of like uh, 1804, 1902, 2004. So you want to update that. So you can come up here, Windows as a service in this case. Lovely. Very nice feature that they have talked about. OK. And this we have is we can go for in-place upgrade. We can go for dynamic provision, provisioning. We can go for autopilot also. Again, the interactive guide comes up over here for the delivery optimizations for Windows 10. Then second, again, that we have an interactive guide, so I'm skipping this. Now, coming down to this favorite one, that is, again, WVT, virtual desktops. I, I've worked with a lot of virtual desktops and on-premises. So when you talk about the Azure one, we have the virtual desktops in Azure also, yes. So Windows Virtual Desktop is a virtualization that runs on Azure. OK, here, why it is telling that it runs on Azure? Just give me a minute. Let me just go back here to this one. OK. So where is my Office 365? Out of this triangle, I've attached it. But where is WVD going to come up? WVD is inside this. So here is my going to be my WVD. There it is. So it is telling it is on the basis of uh, Azure subscription. So Azure subscription is separate, and your Office 365 subscription is separate. Yes, I will show it to you here. Let me just log out and show you here. Let me just go back here. Um, OK. Switch back. So here, I do not have subscription in this. So I'm just switching it back. But this account will not allow me to do So I have to sign out. I will log in with my earlier account. Yeah, it was Sam's account. I, I recollected. I was wondering that which account actually I used. So I'm not going to Office 365. I'm going to be in the Azure subscription. We do have Sam now. Okay, so I'll just quickly log in and show you Windows. That's a best And now uh, M365 portal is portal.office.com, correct? Portal.office.com, admin.microsoft.com, these are the two. But here, not the portal.azure.com, correct? 
so that M365 is outside. So when I say virtual, you see WVD. That's part of your Azure subscription, not for M365 subscription. That is what it's telling here. So WVD is a virtualization service that runs on Azure, and it gives you all this. Yeah. So you can actually go ahead and visualize, virtualize the Office 365 Pro Plus in that case, and you can give it to the users. So you can bring down the RDS experience also. So organizations have actually benefited a lot of with the WVD because it scales out easily. Where it, it's it's like you want a machine, okay, take it. You can have WVD on the Surface device also. Yes. Okay. Those are the things. Oh, that's all done because those are knowledge checks. So tomorrow you should not feel that DK skips something. After the WVD, it was all knowledge check, and when I moved out here. And we are done with this. Okay, so that's all from my side uh, that I wanted to say. And um, I've done my best, whatever possible it is, and I've tried to keep session um, active as much as possible. Would have been happy if you would have also got chance to communicate also, so that it becomes active, active. Um, Eliza, um, all over to you now. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So much, Dinesh. It was actually fantastic. I actually attended your session as well. And you know, you mentioned me so many times. And thank you for shopping for me as well. <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys had fun during Dinesh's session today. And I'm going to open up uh, the floor for questions and answers. So please type your questions into the Q&A panel and I will be asking or I will be taking up all those questions to ask to the instructor. Now, while uh, you put your questions up, and I already have a couple, but while you put all of your questions up, I would like to tell you that we may run uh, maybe uh, four to five minutes over the scheduled time but i would like to take you through the updates and show you all the promotions that netcom learning is coming up with something that you can definitely take advantage of and uh, make sure that you have everything that you need now to talk about the microsoft official courseware that you are to receive uh, for this particular class, you should be able to see your courseware on the Netcom 365 student portal. If your credentials have not been sent to you, please wait for them until Monday and you should be able to find your courseware and your certificate to download as well. All you need to do is just come to the completed classes section and once you come in over here, I'm sorry, it logged me out, I had this up for you, come into the completed classes section and you will be able to download your certificate and you will be able to download the book as well. The recording is actually going to be sent to you within the 24 hours. It is going to be a Netcom Learning email and you should be able to access Dinesh's class uh, that was held today uh, for you as well. Um, so talking about a couple more promotions. So Netcom Learning. We have everything available on our website. All you have to do is just come to www.netcomlearning.com. If you want to, like Dinesh was talking about security today, Microsoft Cybersecurity, there are new courses which have come up with Microsoft Cybersecurity. All you need to do is just put in security in the search bar. And once you do that, it's going to take you to the page, scroll all the way down, and under the products, under the product section, come to Microsoft Security. This is going to show you all the courses which are upcoming and which have already been there for Microsoft Security. Now, with the mention of Teams, I also want to tell you, do you know that 32 million people get onboarded on Teams every day? And most of the enterprises you know from small to large enterprises do not know how to use the teams or how to optimize the value of teams that is that team provides to you so if you want we have a free two-hour teams training right over here all you need to do is come to our promotions section and once you come to our promotions 
you will be able to see the free Microsoft Teams training. It is a free two hour training for organizations. And reason why I say for organizations, it's because, you know, you're going to be using your teams differently. So please make sure that you have more than 10 people joining that class. And from your organization, if you'd like to get into the Microsoft Teams training, I'd be more than happy to do that for you. We'll be more than happy to set up that for you. And we will be able to customize the two hour training according to your needs. Also, like Dinesh was talking about, was the discovery days and other master classes. For that, all you have to do is right on top, you have the resources section. And under the resources section, just come to the webinars option. And in the webinars option, you'll see all different discovery days. We're having an ITIL discovery day under business processes on May 18th, but next Saturday, we're having an Azure Saturday again. You have the Microsoft Azure Administrator Masterclass coming up. And if you want to go for other brands, like I said, you have ITIL, you have AWS. Then again, you have another Microsoft Azure Masterclass on June 3rd. Then on June 5th, you have it on June 10th. And now that you've understood M365, it's always good to understand others as well. So. Now I'm going to move on to the Q&A round. Give me one quick moment and let me sift through the questions that we have. Okay. Wow. So many questions. Dinesh, you're ready. Oh, yes. Let me just go ahead and answer to the questions of students. Uh, what's the question that we are having at, uh, now? Okay, so the very first question that I saw, and I'm going all the way from the beginning. Um, mm. Can you please tell the difference between M365 and Office 2019? Okay, so Office 2019 is just a single product that is there with us. That is just you go ahead and install it. And when you talk about off, uh, M365, M365 is a complete suit of so you have Office uh, in that, you have uh, a complete, many other applications are also there in that case. Okay, another question which is coming from Priyesh is, please suggest a certification at a beginner level. Um, see, uh, if you want to be part of Azure, okay, then AZ900 is the one that you could go ahead for it. But if you look from the SaaS perspective, the products that were listed here today in this, so then you can go for M MS900. These are the two things that you could look out. And whichever fits to your domain, you could look out for it. Like if you are into email, SharePoint, Teams, and all that stuff, go for M uh, MS900. But if you're looking out for some virtual machines, networking, then go for AZ900. All right, thank you so much. And the next question is coming in that is, how are Outlook groups different from Office 365 or M365 groups? So the Outlook group is altogether different here. Uh, this is more of technical. So what I can do is I can email it to the to the person for this because there's a complete scenario that is required here for to explain. Okay, no problem. I will share the email address with you separately. Sure. Um, so M365, all I see, I don't know if this is a question or not. M365 E1 versus E3. Mm -hmm. I, I that's that's all it says. Yeah, Do you yeah. Understand? <laughs> yeah, I understood the student want to understand that what is the difference between uh, e1 and e3 like we have it in e5 also so there could be the comparison but let me just uh share that if it is possible for me to uh, let me just go to the live and compare that okay compare. yes let me go ahead and give you presentation rights M365. Just go ahead and just one minute I'll take it.
on sharing my screen. OK, so these are the plans that we are having it when you talk about uh, the if you if you just want to go ahead and just ping it here also, that's very easy for us to find out the solution for this. Just say compare M365 plan. So you'll have it here one, two, you have all plans, then you have is this where student is talking about E1, E3, and E5 can easily look over here and can identify that what do we have it over here. So there will be a huge list that, okay. So you'll find out here that's. So you could see that the points which are missing out. So you could easily find out what is there and what is not there in that case. Yeah. So this is the link that one could go ahead and compare and easily look out for it. Search for, um, you'll be easily able to find it. Look out for this one. Just put this query, compare M365 plans. And that's the one that you put it here. OK. Next question, okay. please. OK, next question. I'm going to leave the presentation rights with you just in case. Um, is Yammer more like a company based intranet site? Request for the question. OK, is Yammer more like a company based intranet site? I think the I think what the uh, learner wants to know if you can only use it within the company or outside of the organization as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, Javier. It can be used outside the organization also because it is part of your Office 365. It's and then uh, it's but it's meant for your internal employees. Okay. Uh, following up on the E1 to E3 versus E3, Scott has another question for you. Um, following up on the question about E5 licensing levels, can you explain the differences between P1 and P2 within the E5 level? Okay, fantastic. So when you talk about uh, P1 and P2, that's pointing towards the Active Directory, Scott, here. So you have uh, features like uh, what you can do is you can compare straight away with uh, P1 and P2. Uh, the feature that there are two differences. One is AIP. Let me just flash the screen here and uh, give you the comparison itself uh, on the board that I want to write it for you. OK, so if you are pointing towards AAD P1 and AAD P2, OK. So here you have the conditional access feature in P1. So what is conditional access is like where you put up a clause that this application to be used only in the specific subnet only uh, or the MFA should be there. So it's a good security feature, compliance feature, uh, governance feature coming in. But when you talk about P2, so you have AIP. Remember, I was talking about a uh, feature that uh, we had was uh, uh, certain users using uh, uh, accessing the site, logging into Azure via uh, via Tor browser, or their uh, their passwords are getting attacked. Lots lots of uh, password uh, negative is, marks is coming up. So that you can find it out in um, AIP. And the other feature that we have is privileged identity management. Privileged identity management is an amazing feature, Scott. Let's take an example. You are having a, a admin role in your company, okay, for a specific application. But today, Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday, you're not in the company. But inside the company, technically, you are again an administrator over there. So if your account gets com uh, if your accounts get compromised, so the problem is there that yes, the the query could come down to you that did you log in? You said no, I was not there. You say that here, but what happens with privileged identity management? You activate the rules and deactivate the rules. So you log into your shift, take the roles, and then you log out, get the roles back. Such kind of features are there. So when you talk about major, major difference that you have, the, the main thing that you have in AAD P2 is um, um, AIP and PIM. OK? Thanks, Scott. OK. 
Um, next question for you is, um, I'm sifting through the thank yous. <laughs> um, what kind of servers would our organization need to accommodate a federated identity? I missed out that question. Could you please repeat that? Sure. Uh, what kind of servers would our organization need to accommodate a federated identity? I'm, I'm, oh. I'm assuming this is single sign-on. And please yes. correct me if I'm wrong. Wow, you're, you're a technical person also. Amazing. Yeah. I took your class. <laughs> <laughs> okay yes definitely you could go ahead and use uh, see when you talk about the federated identity you can look out for the ADFS servers uh, if you're not opting for password hash synchronization and looking out for sa single sign-on so ADFS is there you can integrate with ping federate and if both of them are not there then you have a PTA so I cannot recollect that it's an agent basically yeah it's a pass-through authentication yeah it's a pass-through authentication agent that you can install it on it so what happens when the user tries to go goes ahead for the authentication it goes down to that agent picks up the username and password and gets it authenticated so so one ADFS two ping federate third pass pass through authentication agent yeah pt agent okay thank you um last question uh last question because we've already run out of time uh for sso does azure recognize third party idp vendors um it's a good question so uh generally it supports your um, uh, you are talking about the identity provider. Uh, yes, if you're talking about Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, yes. When you talk about the um, when you talk about the applications in Azure, I have seen that in past. We can go ahead and get it authenticated for that also. Yes. Okay. And if any other questions are left out, so you could collect all those questions and uh, send it to me, we could reply them on the email. Yes, that's that's exactly what, is, what I was about to say. Um, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to send us your questions and I will have Dinesh answer them for you. Uh, please send us an email at Microsoft at netcomlearning.com with your questions and talk about the webinar title as well. Leave us your feedback with your questions and we would be more than happy to address this for you. Uh, Paul, I also have your request for the slides. I will be sending them to you over the email. Now we are going to launch a quick poll um, to find out how many people might be interested in taking some additional training. In addition, we have a lot more informative webinars and events coming up. Please go to www.netcomlearning.com forward slash webinars forward slash to register. Thank you all for joining us today. If you come up with any additional questions, please feel free to send them to Microsoft at netcomlearning.com at any time. We hope that you found today's event informative and we look forward to seeing you back here with us soon. Feel free to tell your friends and colleagues about our events, webinars, and other courses. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Yeah, that's very really important. Yeah, always. Thank you for the wishes.